Hello, my name is Debbie Anderson, and I'm here today to help you on your healing path from narcissistic abuse with education, science, and spirituality. So today I'm here to talk with you about trauma bonding and um, talking about why I was specifically trauma bonded, which is most uh, in most abusive relationships, this happens very frequently and you're not even aware of what it is or what's going on with you. So I hope that this helps you to understand perhaps why um, it takes so long to leave your abusive partner. So learning about trauma bonding, um, which is also um, like Stockholm Syndrome, um, is very important to your recovery after narcissistic abuse. So again, I'm hopeful that this topic will help you understand why you keep staying or why you stayed so long with your abuser and uh, even after you realized you were being abused and mistreated. I stayed in my abusive relationship because of being trauma bond, bonded for sure um, to my narcissistic partner. And here's what happened to me and the signs that I now know that this happened um, are clear. So I didn't realize that I was even in an abusive relationship Others found it very hard to understand why I stayed with my abusive partner. And I stayed, again, because of trauma bonding, um, where I was addicted to the hormonal roller coaster my narcissistic partner sent me on. Those of you who have never been in an abusive relationship struggle to understand how anyone could stay. And it's not uncommon for someone to ask you, uh, why'd you stay? Or why don't you leave? You might have felt judged by others because you didn't leave. And some people clearly don't understand even going as far as asking you um, or saying to you, why did you stay? You stayed and you deserved what you got. And it's very horrible to hear that and it's not in the least bit helpful for sure. For those of us who are survivors asked ourselves why we stayed can be a really tough question to answer. Um, at the time, <clears throat> I had no idea that I was in an abusive relationship and I, I clearly had no idea. And not until my friends and then my therapist explained to me what <clears throat> excuse me abuse was that I was in an abusive relationship that I left. It was, it had to be explained to me actually many times over a course of about a year for me to understand this. So I'm hopeful that maybe this, by reading this and maybe reading it a few times or listening to this, you'll be able to understand sooner what is actually going on with you. So, I was in my relationship with my narcissistic partner for 14 years, so uh, it was a long-standing problem and I couldn't really ever put my finger on what was wrong. And so this was because I was conditioned to believe that abuse is always physical. Um, I'm a nurse clinician who works in mental health and still I had no idea that I was being abused. Uh, on television, even in movies, I saw characters who were obviously evil and the abuse that they dole out to their partners or whoever it might be is really clear that it's very obvious that it's abusive. They're violent, um, they might shout at their the person that their target is aggressively or even on some television shows, of course, they kill the person in a fit of rage. While this can happen, <clears throat> it's not a true depiction of the abuse that many experience, including the abuse that I suffered. My abusive partner didn't hit me, so I didn't think that it was abuse. I didn't understand that the manipulation, the lying, the controlling <clears throat> behaviors, the gaslighting, the constant criticisms, 
The callousness and lack of empathy, anger, and other traits were all abusive behaviors. Narcissistic abuse is deceptive and it occurs, occurs over time like a slow poison. I didn't even realize what was happening. He would say some offhand comment here or there, an insult here or there, but I didn't get it. It did not, I didn't see it, honestly. This is because the abusers are great at portraying to be everything that you're looking for in a partner or a relationship, whatever it might be, and they love bomb you with their attention. You believe that this is the abuser's real self, and when the mask starts to slip more and more from them, you believe it's out of character, and it must be your own fault for making the partner so angry or whatever else behavior that they're exhibiting towards you. I stayed in an abusive relationship partly because I was trying to win back my abuser's attention. However, I was also biologically attached to him through trauma bonding. It actually feels like an addictive drug. It's a lot like being addicted to it, um, even like something like heroin. An abusive relationship is a roller coaster, but a roller coaster from hell. With suffering and then intermittent reinforcement of kindness when you obey. So this means that our bodies go through their own turmoil with high levels of stress hormone cortisol paired with dopamine when given affection as a reward. Your body becomes addicted to the hormones with all the back and forth of these behaviors by the abuser. We love the connection we had with the abuser in the beginning and it felt like nothing we'd ever experienced in the past, so we think. And we want to feel this again. It's really like a cat playing with a mouse, going back and forth with the emotions and the hormones so much that our bodies become dependent on having their approval. And these ups and downs really take their toll on our bodies. You might find that you have all sorts of physical complaints that you never had before, terrible headaches, unexplained rashes on your body, aches and pains that you can't account for. They, you might have chest pains or get sick easily because your body can only handle so much stress. Your immune system is certainly depleted. So I stayed in my relationship despite the stress on my body because it wasn't clear to me what the problems really were. The tactics that he could use, including the controlling behaviors, the gaslighting, and the intermittent attention. And I felt that I was backed into a corner where I felt desperate, confused, and blamed myself, trying to win back the affection of my partner who I loved and I thought I could not live without. Now I know why. Fortunately for me, I didn't leave. I did leave my narcissistic partner. However, I didn't go no contact or even low contact, no doubt because I was so bonded to him. I was also convinced that I could co-parent with him, which is also not possible with people like this. I blamed it on trying to trying to be the best parent and to work with him so that we could be the best parents to our child. However, I know now that this is also not possible. Um, I found out that you can't possibly co-parent with a toxic person. It just isn't possible. Others don't try to leave it all and are only free from the clenches of the abuse when they are discarded by their abusers. An abusive relationship with a narcissist or a psychopath tends to follow the same pattern. Idealization, devaluation, and discarding. And at some point, the survivor will be so beaten down the abuser will no longer get any benefit from using them and abusing them. They may have totally bankrupted them. They might have destroyed your, their confidence, ruined their reputation or worse, and they move on to their next target. However, at some point, once they're gone, the survivor, which was me, can finally focus on ourselves and slowly come around to the idea that you were even abused. And this is a hard time when you figure out what happened. However, it is a time to grieve the relationship and get angry, no doubt, realizing what damage was done to you. And it's important to also realize that none of it was your fault. None of it. None of it was my fault.
Abusers seem to be able to sense vulnerability and often pull wherever their target is. In my case, of course, it was me. Back in with empty promises and lies that will not change. Or that things will get better. That's another one that he used to say. Only for the abuse to continue, of course. I remember my narcissistic partner getting down on his knees actually with me and begging me to stay um, and remain in the relationship and that things would of course get better and he would try and we would work it out and please don't leave and honestly it was worth an academy award really because although this sounds callous of me narcissists have absolutely no ability to feel empathy or kindness or caring this was all a very deliberate act trying to get me to continue to provide his narcissistic supply Narcissists cannot change, ever, as they are not capable. They might change or appear to, but it's only for their own benefit and to get something else from you that they want. It may be your money. It may be your paycheck. It might be to remain in the lifestyle that they've been used to, the house that they've lived in with you, or the satisfaction that they gain from the constant breaking down of you, in my case me, using their tactics or his tactics which were cruel and very calculated. So survivors need a distance from abusers to realize the impacts of the abuse and to have space to work through their feelings and reach out to, to a support network if that's uh, actually your friends or your family um, or if it's online. There's plenty of support groups. Forming a healthy connection with others will break the trauma bond. This is when the healing can really begin and once you understand how your abusive partner targeted you and that it was never because you were weak ever, it's because all your all your strengths um, are what they're after and these are, are attributes that the abuser doesn't have but sees in you clearly. Here are some signs that you might be in a trauma bond with someone you notice repetitive patterns of non-performance. Your partner promises you whatever that might be. Of course, it never shows up. You're disturbed by something that is said or done and in your relationship, but you let it go. You feel trapped in a relationship because you see no way out. You have circular arguments with your partner that go around and around in circles with no real winner. You punish, you're punished and given the silent treatment by your partner when you don't obey. You can't let go of the relationship even though you know something is very wrong and you can't stand the, the person you've become or even the person that you're with. You may try and leave but are plagued by such longing to get back with your partner that it feels like it will destroy you. Even as I knew I was doing the right thing, I felt empty with painful feelings as I broke the trauma bond. Leaving the narcissist and breaking the trauma bond is a process, not a simple act that you perform once. It's deeply confusing and I could never, I would never wish it on anyone. But it was something that I had to go through in order to heal. And it's very necessary to return to yourself, your authentic true self. Taking back your life and control from this person who stole it. I'm one of the, I'm one of the fortunate ones because of the support my friends and therapists gave me. That isn't to say it was easy because it wasn't, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But... I did it, and you can too. My narcissistic partner actually followed me to another city and bought a house across the street from me when I left. I had to sell the house that I had just bought and buy another one um, on another street uh, on the other side of the new city, causing me to lose over $20,000. It's hard to understand how absolutely destructive and truly evil these abusers are to us if you haven't lived it. Maybe you're realizing that you're in the beginning stages of recovery and the cognitive dissonance is still happening in your mind, so you're not at the point when you're ready to break the trauma bond, but you're, you want to dissolve this cognitive dissonance so you can move forward. Knowing it's within our power to leave, to save ourselves from these awful dynamics, even when we feel hopeless and defeated, is very important. You are not alone, and that it, there is support here 
and there are support on lots of the websites. Please find my information at, um, on my website about narcissistic abuse and recovery. And also I'm on Instagram and Facebook. You can find the links here below. Um, there's always support for you. I did not feel as though I was supported in the beginning and it was a really difficult place to be. Beginning to know that you're not crazy or that there's actually nothing wrong with you is the most important first step in getting out and getting free. Please reach out to me if I can help you in any way. If you have a question or just to say hello, hello, please do. And I wish you well on your path to healing from narcissistic abuse. Take care.